Hey, what is going on, guys? It's Connor here from Menudox, and welcome back to the second episode of the Menudox podcast, or the Doccast, uh, whatever you want to call it. Today, we've got a guest. It's one of our Menudox content creators. It is Ethan. Say hi, Ethan. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> um, I mean, I was about to say, as per always, we have a structured podcast, but um, this is episode two. Anyways, we, we've got a structure to follow, and we're going to start off with finding out a little bit about Ethan to bring the main Udox community, who is so very interested in our creators, um, closer. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to start off with Ethan. Where are you from? Are we starting off with me? Yeah, where are you from, man? Um, where am I from? I'm from this great little country called New Zealand. He's lying right. to you. It's not great, but it is little. Um... But yeah, he's he's from New Zealand. He's a cool kid, as you can tell. The Kiwi accent is like a smidge lower than the Aussie accent on the Which makes scale. it better. Come on now, Aussie accent, top of the line. It's like top shelf, you know, maybe like mid shelf. Yeah, but I'm more affordable to the everyday. <laughs> hey, no, come on now. There's more of us. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can bulk 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 by anyways uh <laughs> what got you into programming then? um well pretty much back in this thing called high school it was a wee while back now i'm i'm not quite that young anymore sadly um but basically i took this class called computer science um we didn't actually do programming in it but uh well we did scratch but i don't think that counts um, <laughs> I said that in the, in the the first podcast. I was like, "Yeah, I I oh actually maybe it was the ask me anything because someone asked me how I go into programming and I'm like, in IT I did scratch robotics. It was fun, <laughs> and then we're just talking about front end web dev and I'm just like, we made one website and it was very basic, very fun. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Um, so pretty much. So it was like computer science where we did Scratch, and I also did robotics on the side. Um, not some like puny little plastic robot either. We built metal robots and had them fight each other. Oh, you um, actually built the robots? Yeah, I built the robot. I programmed the robot. I drove the robot. I, I, I was like basically a one-man team. Uh, we ended up at Nationals a couple times. Um, at one point, we were 57th in Oceania. Um, in Oceania, never. That's actually uh, pretty good. It was uh, about fifty-seventh out of like a hundred teams that came along. So I can't remember bad. if if Oceania is like a carbon copy of Australasia, like is it the same thing, or is it just like Oceania is just New Zealand, Australia, and like a little bit. Of... I think it's the same as Australasia because we had like um, Korean teams and Japanese teams and stuff. Oh, shit, all right. Well, that would have been fun. Where was it? Like, in New Zealand, or...? Yeah, it was, actually. It was up in uh, Roto, Vegas. Uh, Roto, Roto, so... Well, aren't you lucky to leave your beautiful, small country? I know, it was great. They came to us, and it's like, the New Zealand teams were just so diverse. Like, everyone's robots were different. And then the Chinese had just perfected one design, and every team had the same design. That doesn't surprise Probably like every bit. every every robot was literally like an exact carbon copy of each other, and they so, got it down to like a a, a perfect art. It was a it was a Hyundai um, sponsored um, robot transformer. That's what it was. I would not be surprised <laughs> if you pushed a button, it actually transformed a Ute. <laughs> Mate, they were wow. taller than you. They were what? They'd be taller than you when they turned on. That that'd be scary. I don't think that was, anyway. It was quite scary because I tried building one that like that was similar to them, but instead of going straight up and down, like um, you know what a scissor lift is, right? Yep. So the robots are kind of like scissor lifts, and that uh, many scissor lifts are about they go about two meters high. Um, I tried building one that was about a meter high. But by the time it got about 10 centimetres off the ground, it was already leaning to one side. 
so it would go up by about a meter and it would also go sideways by about a meter. So that was quite scary driving around. Um, Clearly didn't do the uh, Pythagoras theorem correctly with um, uh, taking into account the gravity downwards. Uh, um, no, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense, actually. If you were um, taking... If you had taken that into account, I reckon you. I don't know. I'm redoing it this year, so I'll give it another go. I'll keep oh, yeah. you updated. Take, take oh, into well, account well, the tides as well, because that, that has like a impact. Does it? Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're on an island. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on an island as well. That's kind of uh, to get back on track. It's a big boy island, though. Mine's bigger than yours. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, but pretty much just like just did the whole like programming bad boy, and then I was like, I kind of want to understand why my robot moved forward. Um, and then then I made Hangman, and I was a programmer. Wow, it was just like that overnight, pretty. Uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah, with a few months in between, but pretty much, yeah. So does that mean that you're like studying computer science? Yeah, I'm studying an honors degree in computer science. And after I, I see, I never planned honors, bachelor's, uh, uh, an extra year, so like the next level up, but not try hard enough to be a master's degree yet. Is your end game to get the the far as you can? That, no, or? just enough no, to get a I good job. I don't. I don't want to spend ten years at uni studying. Um, I'm gonna get spend me four years, do my degree. Uh, hopefully go into the workforce, sort of, you know, dream job, um, end up down possibly cybersecurity or machine learning. Already do a bit of it now. So Are you going to try to do that for the Defence Force? No, you got private money's like double. Yeah, but I, I heard that people go uh, Defence Force and then obviously move to the private sector after because, like, I mean, uh, I mean you're probably already at uni. Doesn't really matter, but like the the uh, defense force will end up like paying for. Yeah, but then you've got to spend like five, ten years in active service and stuff. And it's just I don't really want to do that. I just want to you know sit in my front of my computer uh, twenty hours a day uh, can't you, programming. Can't you just go reserves? Because like we we don't really need any defense. When Nothing when like... with the New Zealand Defense Force, but we um we are basically just reserves. Anyway. <laughs> Whenever Australia calls you come, is that what it is? Uh, what do you mean? We've got like two planes, like a couple. A two couple whole regular. planes? Two yeah, whole planes? No way, that's crazy. Uh, I don't know. Um, public sector is like kind of cheaper, but they don't know how to fire you. And then private sector is more like, here's the money. If you want to do something with your life, uh, come to us. But like, you are replaceable. Oh, I suppose that's the same with everything in life. So is it like a is there like a big market for they're looking for people to go to the private sector or is like it's gonna be a lot of job? Um, looking on your sort of like seek.com and all of that sort of just basic job hunting sites, there's always quite a few openings with a decent amount popping up at low levels to be able to get into it. Like I think it'll be hard, but once you're in there, it'll be good. And like starting wage is like eighty grand per year. Oh, yeah, but that's NCD. Do you want me to convert that to Australian dollars? I'm pretty sure it ends up being less, but like... One New Zealand dollar is equal to 93 cents. So yeah. if I put my uh, 80,000 in here, that's 74,000 a year. Connor, how much are you on per year? Me, at the moment, without any form of education certificate stuff, um, I'm on 50k. That's pretty good. That, that is for, better than I would have thought, to be honest. Yeah, well, what's the fresh food people, bro? Come on now. Up you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I will up my game, actually. That's going to you know, me to do PhD. You know, I, I think they're changing all the countdowns to Woolworths. Like, they're actually rebranding. What do you mean? They, they went Woolworths to countdown like five years ago. Are you serious? In New Zealand, about five, ten years ago, all the Woolworths shut down, they became countdowns. Ah, why well, I, I heard they're rebranding. I don't know. Rumors. 
this up. We got this one city in New Zealand where it's like you've got a pack and save next to a countdown, next to another countdown. Like they're all across the road from each other. Because it right. used to be Woolworths countdown pack and save, so now it's just a countdown countdown pack and save. Well that's <laughs> Alright. Um well, I suppose we should move on. Next question. Uh, what drew you to, to join Mania? Well, that's a, that's a funny question you ask there, Connor, actually. Um, oh, yeah. Real riveting. Real, real riveting. Um, you know, I just got really motivated. Um, I think I was with Anthony from over at the old Suggestions Bot Discord, um, chilling in one of his prior guilds, um, talking about possibly making videos for him. And then, uh, would you know it, someone named Connor slides into my DMs, uh, something along the lines of, hey, mate, um, we need another Python reviewer. Would you like to come and join us? Don't and, tell uh, me about that. I, what? I'm not even joking, right? I actually full on was going to snake Anthony because I was talking to Anthony telling me about you and how you were going to make videos for him. Uh, <laughs> I actually slid into your DMs to steal you. I, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm not even joking. <laughs> but now both of you are with Menudoc. How jokes is that? Oh, it's great. Yeah. I mean, That's I also funny. love the fact that um, this was about two years ago. About two years ago, last week. And look at how that's piped out. We've gone to like three different content creators for the tutorials I'm now making now. Yeah. And you're making them better than all of them combined. Haha. <laughs> Every I mean, second I, I mean, I mean to be fair, Vex did end up making his own different series, and it is kind of popping at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, Gavin just disappeared, and we've never heard from him ever again. So that's cool. Oh, I also love the fact just rereading this message. You're like, we already have one Python code review. It's like, yeah, cool. And then you're just like, yeah, but he's new to the language. Um, so <laughs> it's completely up to you. Oh wait, hold up. I'm you were pretty... really just you were really just foreshadowing that everything would be up to me two years later. Of course, of course. Always. I like, I, it's, not, it's not fully like that, you know, every so often someone pops up. Yeah, I mean that's they do. Oh when we got we got Vex, we got Lug and they kind of poke their heads in every so often. Oh I, I mean I feel that. Or Rogue, just come, or Rogue just comes in and goes, can you explain why you're, like, um, adding adding 15 here or something? Or, like, what's this with doing? It's like... Uh, Does Rogue actually I, know Python? Um, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I know he just pops his head in every so often to question something I'm doing and ask us to explain it. So uh, something, something that you know you're doing right, and he pops in and he's just like, yeah, but, like, why? Oh no, sorry, it wasn't Rogue recently, it was um, Ryzen, he popped in, he's like, I've got a question, um, what do you do async with? Like, what's that oh. do? Um, I know he I knows kinda, a little bit of Python, yeah. And then I kind of half bungled the whole thing, and then Logan came in clutch with the possibly just paraphrased Google answer. Actually, we Are you happy that Logan's a part of your team now? Because he hasn't always been on. I mean, I feel like he's kind of stepped in to fill up the gap left by MA, um, you know. I mean, that's how uh, it was. I mean, it was quite a big loss when he left, to be honest. <laughs> he carried. Honestly, if we had pulled through and did written guides a little bit earlier, I reckon he would have come through and done a bunch of written guides for us. Fucking all. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty active as well. Logan's not as active, but whenever he pops in, it's always useful. Where'd you find him? Like, um, um, I was looking into making the dashboard dashboard series actually, and he was the one making it, so I kind of just slid into his DMs. I was like, you know, look, I want to make X and Y. Can you explain Z? Um, that way I don't stuff it up in the video. And, okay. um, now, you now, never now made a dashboard. Pardon? You'd never made a dashboard empire? Well, no, it was more the concepts between. IPC. So what we're using is something called IPC, which is an interprocess connection. Yep. So low level, think of it as a asynchronous WebSocket. Okay. And 
at the time I hadn't played around with those. I'd played around with like wrappers around stuff. I hadn't played around with the actual code behind them. So I was just like, you know, look, I'm working on some content for YouTube. I'm curious if you're able to provide a bit more of an overview into how it actually works um, so that I can get it correct rather than doing what I think um, it, it, it does, you know? I mean, that's always the best way to go around it. That's what the reviewer system plays for. Like, I've always... I've ended always... up making a whole word doc for me. Yeah. Now you just got to record it, right? Uh, kind of. We've got, we've got the uh, end result, and I'm planning on, for the first episode, taking a change, rather than the Discord dot .py series, where we kind of just go, eh, this episode's standalone, eh, here it is, working at the end. The dashboard's going to be like a sort of, I've got the code that I want to work towards, and I now have to split that up into episodes. Like, I've got the finished working dashboard in front of me. I'm going to show it off in episode one and be like, cool, dashboard, here's what we make. And then the following episodes is going to be, here's how you make uh, the login page. Um, here's how you make the ability to edit a guild um, and all of that kind of stuff. So oh. it's a lot more structured than this good pie. So pretty much from the time the first episode releases, I'm going to be able to actually say, you're having 20 episodes. Here's the title of each episode. Here's the code of each episode. So I want to plan it out pretty much pre record the whole thing. And then it's all just good to, to go. Just need splitting up and reviewing and then it's done. I remember you asking me if you could do like a really long episode. after. <laughs> Yeah, like using YouTube's actual how you can split your videos up into sections now. So oh, that's that. actually how you wanted to do it. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I, f I thought you wanted to do like 40 minute videos. Oh, no. Nah. Uh, that, that's a long time. I was just hoping to make them all sort of one continuous video. That way you can actually do the whole thing. But if I'm going to split it up into episodes, like each episode sort of needs to have a resolution, you know? Well, not necessarily. Like each... I. You could always just, like, have, like, a, we will continue this thing, especially if they're, like... Oh, no, I just feel bad doing that, though, because it's, like, you've just spent all this time, and there's, like, no discernible uh, output. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, but we could always also, um, what we could do is release it to premium members first, like, channel members, like, the entire set, and then we could, like, publish it, like, uh, one episode every couple of hours. You know, like how like Anson does it, and oh, you probably don't know because it's not in your kind of community. Um, there's a YouTuber called Anson, and he makes Discord.js videos. And what he will do is he'll pump through a shitload of video, and then he'll upload like a video every three hours or so, and then he'll wait a couple weeks. He'll pump out shitloads. Of you know, instead yeah. of instead of doing like one video every week or so, he'll just like. Like yeah, an entire dump, entire dump. Like w when I when I uploaded the uh, Discord basics, Discord bot basics videos, I mm -hmm. made the mistake of uploading every single one at the same time, um, which absolutely killed the views on it. Absolutely killed how they pushed to the notification boxes. Um, but like having that small gap between them, like a couple of hours here and there, it actually like helps. It'll push every single video, and it will go to notification. Yeah, because I've got about 2,000 lines of code, Python code, um, plus all the HTML. So there's going to be certainly a few episodes there where it could possibly be like two to three a day um, type of thing. How and do you... It's done. How, how long, like, video-wise, do you reckon they'll take? Like, how many minutes? Uh, per video or overall? No, I mean, like, overall, if you were to record the whole thing in one go, how long would you take you to record the whole video? Um, if it was going to be one video, it'd probably be a lot less than the entire series, just because I'd be working towards one set goal. Um, possibly a couple hours. A couple hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it's still, a, it's still a lot. Like, what, you look at all, like, free code camp and all, then they do it. Honestly, you were going to sit there for a couple hours and just... No. You were just going to, like, cut it up? I was just going to do it, you know, pause it, and then pause it wherever the section would end. You know, take a break, come back. 
I get you. I don't know. I, I, I suppose we can talk more about how we'll go about our plan. Once you're I mean, I'm about to split up all the code into episodes, so like it's kind of a, a now or never type of thing. But I'm going to split it up into episodes and just go that way. I mean, that's... here's an episode on how to do a invite me link button. Basically, you put a button in the HTML, and then you set the href to um, <clears throat> your uh, invite link. See you in the next episode, guys. That's crazy, man. Never seen that before. <laughs> that, that's so crazy. So for, for everyone that doesn't know, um, since we didn't really speak about it, we're doing a dashboard for the Discord.py series. Um, it's something that's been requested. And I don't know, maybe you could, is it possible to adapt it to the other series that we've got in different languages? Or is it actually like fully integrated? Um, no, it'd be quite easy to, because it's two separate standalones, so rather than sort of playing around with them both dependent on each other, the web server is very independent from the bot, I mean, outside the fact that it's written in Python, but if you change it over to a different language, it'd be perfectly fine. It's basically, the way it works is it'll render out its template, um, HTML template, uh, for those that you don't know, um, at least in Python backend, you can set up templates in your HTML so you can use variables and things within them. Uh, so sort of dynamic HTML, CSS, the CSS type of stuff. So we do that and then we just populate the variables with data from the bot. So assuming you can find some form of inter-process connection IPC stuff for your language and you're happy to transform the web server into your own language of choice, uh, it'll port over quite easily. Oh, there you go. That's, that's probably what a lot of people want to hear because I know for, for a fact that a dashboard for Discord.js on the... So I'll put it out there that the main, the main file, which has all of our routes in it, is 500 lines of code. So if you can port that all over, you should be fine. Although there are some utility stuff like enums um, and the actual IPC that will need porting over as well. Um, but pretty much um, the bot only exists um, as a means to serve data to the web server when it's wanted. Like and that fetching shared guilds, um, handling the events. So some of the events we handle on the dashboard is that you can customize your guilds on member join and on member leave events. So you can send an embed, you can literally just send a message, um, you can toggle it on and off, change the color, build an embed, pretty much all of that. So the bot exists to fulfill that event and send the embed based on what you're set in the dashboard. Oh, well, I mean, at least, it, and like prefix changes and all that, like you've covered like the basic yeah so you can set your prefix and you can also set what should happen when someone joins your guild and leaves your guild in terms of if it, if it should send a message or not and you said color of embeds as well. you can see you can choose where you want to send the embed what the title should be description author footer color timestamp whether or not to send it like at all yep um, and like all of those um like where do you send the embed it's not some the user has to manually pick a channel. It's a drop down with every channel in your guild that the bot can send messages to. And that information gets um like you can you can um yes it gets put into a, a database. You need no. to change it by the bot dashboard. Uh oh, what do you mean by that? Like how like, how the so for instance, gets information or how the bot uses the information? But for for instance, like uh, if you're changing the prefix, you could change it via the Discord or via the dashboard. Yeah, so pretty much the way it works. Let me just find the event for prefix. Uh, is that um, the web server actually does nothing with the database? It, it never touches the database. Okay. Is so that a security if thing or you want to update the prefix on the dashboard, you'll enter your prefix, um, uh, click update, and then your web server will go, look cool, I've got a prefix. Um, and then it will go to your bot 
it will make a request to a route on your bot, which we've called update guild prefix. And then within there, it's going to modify uh, self.bot.config, which is our database for config stuff, and upsert your prefix in there. Okay. Well, so that's probably the safest route to go that your database is compromised. It's less about that. Like, yes, it's mainly because I can't be bothered setting up two database connections, but also we already have the IPC route there. Mm -hmm. So it's like we already need to query for the prefix. Okay. Um, so we might as well just use the bot because the bot's got built-in documents. We've built our own wrappers around databases to simplify things. Like, oh, okay. it's already it's already there, um, so we're just going to use it. And that, that way... Is that's pre-existing from the discord.py series yeah and oh, okay. also something that saves it as well is your duplication of code because a key concept is dry so don't repeat yourself so rather than writing the code to update a prefix in both the bot and the web server if you just write it in the bot then say you change the database so that it's not called prefix it's actually called guild underscore prefix you just change it in the bot. That, that makes, makes that sense. that makes sense. Um, so with that, is the dashboard going to be the end of the series? That that we're the going. Dashboard is completely separate from the Pi series because the current Pi series has got like thirty episodes worth of content in it, and I was if I was going to make a dashboard for all of that content, it would just be massive. So yep. I've simplified the bot so that it's quite literally a uh, custom prefix. And whether or not to send an embed uh, when someone leaves or someone joins type of thing. So, so it's a standalone series with um, the base of the Discord or Pi series? Pretty like, much. All right, so just a skeleton. Um, with that said, though, what, what's the come after the dashboard? Will... The Discord Dot Pi series continue, and if so, is there many episodes left? Well, I mean, I told you I was going to only be doing twenty-five episodes, and look at where we are now. So I can't really comment on that. Um, if there's ideas, like I'm happy to fulfill them. If they're like sort of decent ideas that cover something new, um, you know, as we've been doing, I cleared out some suggestions the other day, so I've added four new things to my episodes I want to do list. Uh, which See, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that either, where like people, like for instance, let, let's just set the scene. You create a command, um, let's say a band command, right? And then someone asks you to make a tutorial on a soft band, a hack band, and a temp band, but they can't adapt code that pre exists from the series to do that. They just want a carbon copy of it. They want you to make it so that they can copy it because they don't want to think of a way to implement it themselves. You get what I mean? Yeah. And those so are the I, types I, of suggestions that we tend to ignore. I understand that. And I won't make a video on something unless A, I find it interesting. B, I don't think I've already given you the code throughout the series to do it. And C, it's something new from the API. So yeah. I don't know if you saw it uh, the other day in the Menu Docs Discord, but I had about 6,000 uh, characters worth of messages to people on suggestions. Uh, in the development channel? Yeah. I think I read a little. I can send you the message link if you want. Yeah, I'll have I'll have a read after. Um, but yeah, what I, what I was trying to say is like we we tend to ignore suggestions. Um, that as as you said, um, are like like repetition, like stuff that's already in place that you can adapt to new code or new concepts. But you choose not to because you would rather rely on the tutorials themselves. Whereas the tutorials are designed to kind of point you in the right direction, not be something that you rely on. Um, and that's why we have the support channels as well. Like we rather people ask questions, um, get the information and learn something instead of copy and pasting something and not knowing what it does, because that just leads to people coming back constantly for the same uh, like reason. Like I, I, yeah. I you've probably yeah i i experienced that a lot in the discord uh, .js 
channel and and honestly with mandrock being off and not having access to tags it's been a lot harder because we've had to repeat ourselves a lot that pipes into pyro's questions later on as well Ooh, pyro question so what you're saying is there's no defined endpoint of the discord.py series which means that you're still interested in potentially making more episodes so the way I think of it now is Discord.py is sort of going to carry on as long as there is new content. Um, and especially with the rewrite of Discord.py. Um, already one? Is there, isn't there literally something called Discord.py rewrite? It's about to go from 1.x to 2.x. Oh, that's crazy. Sometime, sometime in the next year. Um, oh, and like okay. they're removing... Uh, it's I mean, tomorrow, otherwise I wouldn't be making episodes, but... Yeah. Um, like completely deprecating anything sort of user related, um, updating internal skeletons to make it strongly typed, uh, bumping basic Python <laughs> versions, basically just better in general. When you um, say user related, do you mean like user client, self client kind of stuff? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Wow, it still has that kind of stuff in it. It covers the API. If it's in the API, it's in the wrapper. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, I guess Discord.py isn't just early four bots it's it's, it's a hey look we're going to make a python client to interact with the discord api therefore if it's in the discord api we make it type of thing that's fair um so we covered what i would covered everything really we, we went over the fact that you have no reviewers you have one reviewer <laughs> two reviewers uh we went yeah. over the fact that um although in saying that like I look at the DJs channels, and you've got what, like three, four reviewers, and like, no, no offense, but I still feel like it's not the best to have a lot of reviewers because it sort of just goes around in circles. No, I I agree, but even even saying that, like for the most part, the only reason I started up the V12 series for Discord.js is I was promised help from some people because I I think it's always best to check get your code checked um for oh, series. Yeah and now it just takes like sometimes even weeks to get code reviewed and like perfected to the point where people are like oh yeah i don't see this because they're just like so over it they're done seeing that specific code and then you yeah. end up pushing out something and it's not necessarily the best it could have been that happens with mine as well like i'll try get some code reviewed it'll get like sort of one review on like a partial part of it and then it'll be like a week later and i want to record and it's just like all right cool i'm self-reviewing and improving this and putting it through oh uh, yeah i remember you saying that about ma sometimes like he'd be really active and then just like drop off the face of the earth and then come yeah. back like right in time for you to already be done with the the recording you'll be editing yeah, like, like, I'd, put the, I'd put out the i'd put out the video as a draft and he'd be like how come you did that and it's like well, i gave you three weeks to review the code <laughs> um but no, we've got some cool episodes lined up, as well as a couple more mini series down the line. Oh, mini series teasers, teasers! Actually, don't spill it. We've already teased too much. Don't spill the beans. Uh, well, I mean, they're fairly obvious once you think about it. Don't think. They're... I don't. <clears throat> <laughs> My specialty. Um, do you do you think that your series has uh, honestly like made a difference in that? It obviously directs to based off what i've seen um in the python area yeah um and for positive as well i'll be in like the official python discord and people talk highly of menu docs as a tutorial that's at least somewhat decent see it's the complete opposite for the discord.js i think the the scene for discord.js is like way too critical in the sense that, like, they will critique you to the bone. They'll be like, no, you don't do it this way, so it's completely wrong, and I hate that organization. I will never... Um... That is the perks of a library giving you a built-in command handler and built-in stuff rather than making you do it yourself. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Because I think we've gone through, like, four iterations of command handling um, just throughout, like, the V11, V12 series. Um, but even saying that, we have Commando, which is a separate... A module like a separate package but it has that like built-in kind of sense of like command handling i think event handling don't quote me on that though because i haven't used commando uh before but i just know that it's made by the people that have made discord.js or it's made by the community and it's approved by them 
Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as you said, uh, there's perks to having stuff pre-made for you so that you don't get critiqued on it. Yeah, and it's also like diving back into your question, like I know from within the menu docs help channels, like show people stuff up on simple stuff, but for the most part, they all seem like really appreciative and love the work we're doing. And then, because that's like in the Python scene as well, it's like everyone hates on YouTube tutorials. They're like, why, why bother? You know, you're just going to copy and paste and just take what they're putting out in the video. You know, it's better to sort of read the docs, read written guides. But if you have to, like these guys are somewhat decent. I mean, that's fair. At least, at of, least, at least our videos, videos are, like most of the Discord.py videos out on the internet are utter, I want to say trash in that they promote really bad habits and really like, like, yes, it works, but it's like going down the supermarket to go grocery shopping for 50 things, but deciding you don't need a trolley. Yeah, but a lot of people do that. <laughs> everyone, everyone walks in the shop going, okay, I'm just here to get a mince pie. And they walk out with like half the health and beauty aisle, half the fucking cereal aisle for no reason. And they're like, no, but it's like, but it's like shop. the difference is they walked into the store knowing they wanted 50 things. Yeah. And they're like, nah, we don't need a trolley. Like, I'll just do five loads in my arms. Like, yeah, it works. <laughs> but like, why? Like, you know? Um, I think that covers all the questions that I had about the the Pi series. Um, I'm honest. I, honestly, I don't really pay much attention. Like, I should pay more attention to the the Pi channels more. Seeing how appreciative people are, because I just don't see it as much as I I, I wanted to see it. Um, in the Discord.js, so I just assume that everything else was like that. In saying that, you know the amount of times I've come to you asking for a break. Yeah, I don't get one of those, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> perks, perks are running the place. I don't, I don't necessarily get a break. Um, unless I'm, like, going away and I'm just like, okay, that's it. Phone off. Don't want to talk to you. See you later. Someone else is yeah, in charge for the like, week. Well, it's good to see what everyone's doing, but it's also, like... Okay, like... You've got a knife in your foot. Can you go to the doctors and get it out before you try play sport? Like, can you try to at least learn, like, the difference between a string and an integer before you try to do asynchronous programming? In the, I mean, in the I... In object-oriented world. I've always said, you don't try to speak a verbal language without learning the language first. So why try and code a code in a coding language without learning the coding language first? Like, it's the same concept. You don't insult people by fucking up their language. So you don't insult people by uh, questioning not only their knowledge, but their sanity. Oh, <laughs> when it comes to so code of like, language. Like, oh, yeah. Um, uh, it's like, you, like, lightly suggest something, and they're like, eh. eh. And then it's like, I still can't get it to work. It's like, mm, well, I did offer you the exact way to do it. But, you know, it's You've up been to you. coding for five years. I've been coding for five minutes and I know better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you make the tutorials. I watch them. I know more. Do you know what? Actually, that brings up something uh, that happened in the Discord.js um, support channel. Someone literally copied the code wrong from the tutorials and said that I coded the tutorial wrong. But, like, you can see it work in the tutorial, so it works. <laughs> It's just like, oh, just fun times and support channels. You always got to love them. One has to be, gosh, I need to make some more blooper videos, but on the actual TPY series sometime. It's just like the amount of times, like, I'll be, like, talking through the entire video and then I'm like, all right, let's go test it now. And it just doesn't work. Oh, I like, have so many like, awkward silence. And it's just like, videos. it's just like, I did test this right. I don't, I'm sure I tested this before. <laughs> And then it's like, I've stuffed up the order of my brackets or something. Oh, that's the worst. I, I no. think if I was to, like, make a bloopers videos from every single Discord.js video I've had, there would be so many points where I'm just like, uh, so this will do this and, uh, 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 uh and then... <laughs> I will yeah, like... it's like, there will be some of my blooper videos where it's literally, like, five seconds, like, yo, guys, it's Ethan from Menu Docs. We're today... today... <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it again. 
<laughs> Honestly, so if I pull up my menu docs video folder, it's got eighty five files on it from twenty five episodes. So, you know. <laughs> I delete all mine. I'm just like, get this out of my life right now. I don't even want oh, yeah, to like, see it. I delete most of the ones that actually work out as well. So like, those are ones that have somewhat made it towards editing stage. So times that by five, uh, and you're good to go. That's bad, <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, no, there's cool stuff coming to the series. You just gotta hang around. Gotta, gotta chillax. Gotta got just a vibe. Chillax. Also, something I've found is that because something I want to do with the Dashboard series and that each episode is clearly defined and has its own resolution is that in the Discord.py series, like, a lot of people won't watch the whole series. So, like, they'll come in at, like, episode 15 and they're like, where do I get this database stuff from? It's like, oh, it was five episodes ago. You know, you're going to have to, like, watch the series to get the series type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why you opted for going for more standalone standalone video kind of gave up because i know yeah, like, i ended up i ended up doing that at the end of the v11 series like the code would just be like commands that would literally work if you were to put it in your own environment it's like oh how come this doesn't work it's like uh, i defined it in the video and they're like oh i didn't watch that it's like oh cool. there's your problem <laughs> but so You've been with Menu Docs for what, like two, two years and a week. Two years and a week. Um, and so no, just based just based off that first message you sent me with yeah. the invite being on the thirteenth of the fourth, twenty nineteen. Um, since you've been here, you've obviously made the series. Um, and you initially made an anti spam within Menu Docs, then claimed it as. Just Left. Well, it started off um, within menu docs with um, I forget his I forget his name and I feel really bad. Um, Taso, Taylor. Yeah, yeah Taylor. And we were sort of working on that uh, fifteen months ago now. Yeah. And it started off as that, and then we just both lost interest. He sort of went his way. I just hit hit uni and was like, oh, this is kind of tough. Yeah. Um. And we were also just coming at it like fundamentally conceptually wrong. Like we started off by trying to make it as a bot rather than a package. Yep. So looking back at the archived repo now, it, it's like really bad. Um, uh, and to tie into this for the people that don't know, I have now since moved on and made an anti-spam package and actually got it. I want to say decent, but if there's anyone that knows Python listening, they'll probably rip into me for it. Um, um, is the code public? It's like on your GitHub? It's a public package. If you search PYPI space Discord anti spam, you can install it from there. Otherwise, it is on my uh, GitHub. Yeah, I'll, I'll, sh I'll put your links down in the description of the video so people know. Well, well easy peasy. Um, and that will plug and play with all of your Discord.py bots and. Uh, there's examples, there's documentation, there's unit tests, everything a programmer needs. And that's, how, how big has it gotten since then? When was the initial release? Uh, if we can come back to that and possibly talk about it a bit more, if you let me pull up some stats on it. Yep. Let me jump on that, pretty much just PyPy. Uh, PyPy, Discord, Anti-Spam, let me just double check it pops up. But I want to say it's actually gone quite big in that um we had 18 we've got eighteen thousand k downloads in the last month oh sh okay <laughs> um well, i it's don't know how that's that. happened actually because it used to be about 4k um where is this like on your on the python package registry is that what it is yeah um so i will pull up some pipo stats just double check i'm assuming most of that is sort of mirrors because i've pushed out a few um sort of bug fix bug fixes how jokes recently. would it be if your discord anti-spam package got like download spammed so it looked like it been downloaded well i've got a discord for support and stuff and i mean i wouldn't put it past it based on you know i think one percent of users join like 
the old Discord's currently got like 40 people in it or something. I, I would honestly argue that this is a cleaner site than uh, Node's package management site. Like the and there's the, old, there's the old stats for it. So you can sign to see... Uh, oh, I'm going to hop in the release history. So I first released this on October 31st, 2020. Yep. So it's about half a year old now. And in that time, it has grown um, from just some really, really basic stuff. Like it'll check like three things um, to now being uh, at its current stage. Um, my development environment is 5.2 thousand lines of code. Yeah. A little bit. Um, and that's including like testing, mocks, examples. Um, but the main package itself is 3,000 lines. Wow. Um, and like we've got some like a full on docs. Like my build ideology for this, which you set out in the readme, is that, you know, it's an object oriented approach. Um, so like everything's got its own data stored within it and stuff that is quite scalable. Um, scalable in the sense of it's multi guild out of the box. Uh, performance wise, haven't quite got that far yet. Um, add that it's test driven. So I thought I had documentation in there, but like I'm trying to document every single thing in there because, you know, just in the past, like I, I don't know if you've encountered this, but it's just so annoying when you're trying to use a package that has no documentation. Well, I've used, tried to use packages that literally don't have a readme, so that's fun. Yeah, so it's like I try to document like everything. Like I recently um, added in the ability to have extensions so that you can integrate your own um, sort of extensions and stuff into it that will get called natively by the library itself. Um, oh, okay. Like a plugin system, I want to say? Yeah. Like okay. Um, cool. And so and it's like, I ended up making two pages of documentation just on that, like the call stack, um, how my pre and after invokes work and cancelling invocation and stuff. Okay. I'm assuming all of those just went over your head, but that's okay. Yeah, you lost me at Discord anti-spam. Um... <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is beautiful to know. Um, but that's that. That's not the only um project you've ended up working on with with menu dogs. So you've got you've got Pyro going, um, at the moment, which is a Discord bot that is hosted by menu docs and worked on by you and i want to say there's someone else it was ma me. wasn't it yeah it was ma but it was um, ma he since left uh board not found okay i'm on the wrong account and um, and what is pyro what does it do um you might not like this um given you're the whole like javascripty boy man drop yeah 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 um but basically ma and i were tired of being in the help channels, unable to do anything. So it's kind of like, you know, you've got Duncan Spot for documentation, you've got JavaScript docs, I don't know if you do, but it's like we wanted to be able to do stuff within our own Discord because currently it's go to the discord.py server, use their bot to get documentation, come back to menu docs, copy, paste. And that was just not cutting it. So we're like, you know, we want these features. And then it's like, I think I ended up approaching you about it sometime, or it might have been someone else, and it was basically just, eh, I'll write a to do for it. Um, don't expect it anytime soon. It'll I be think, there. It'll be there in V three type of thing. I think it was more of a we want to implement it so that we because we've got JDA Butler, uh, which is like JDA's like own bot. Like we just host it, so like we've just like copied, pasted, posted them. And so and we've got Robo Danny, but I couldn't get you to do it so we just ended up making our own oh i don't i, I don't remember that. but also jda butler just like i woke up to it duncan did it by himself so i just kind of woke up to it um but the ah. uh, the whole idea was that we would end up trying to web scrape the documentation so that we could have those sort of commands within mandrock so that you know we had one prefix and however many language commands uh, but it just obviously Mandrock just continuously got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. 
yeah, so I think we, I think we waited a couple of months and then we just like stuff this, you know, we can do this in a weekend and And then it didn't take a weekend. Everything. And then get everything. <laughs> <laughs> As is in our documentation command, it's still a bit man drop. Um, by, by about a year now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Mandrock has JavaScript um, and Discord dot, uh, J- Discord JS um, commands. But yeah, I mean, like it's offline right now, so it doesn't really matter. I can get any read the docs documentation with an extra line of code. Oh, so. fun. I ended up doing it for my anti-spam bot for our Discord, um, changing up the keys and stuff. So basically, it just scrapes. Um, so Python has a docs build tool called Sphinx. Um, and basically, there's just a... Th- I don't want to try to pronounce it. Um, it's basically just... Uh, it'll download it, and then since it's built in a uniform way with uniform doc strings, it knows how to read them and pass it and stuff. Ah. So it downloads it once and then it can pass it into its cache, and then it's basically just key value, key, and then value is your documentation. Yeah. So Pyro isn't just, it's not just for docs, it's for more than that, obviously, uh, with the starboard being added. Um, but is that is that it? Like, it's just, it's just docs and starboard? Um, there's a few more under the hood. Um but pretty much at the moment. Yeah, we've also got a, a quiz in there that needs a lot of love and attention. Um, but the generalized idea behind that was we're also sick and tired of people coming into the help channel trying to use a library which is asynchronous and object orientated and relies heavily on the user knowing the differences between X, Y, and Z type of thing yep. without knowing what a string is or what an integer is. So the idea behind that uh, didn't end up eventuating was that we could get them to do that and then it would sort of, you know, come back and be like, yeah, cool, you know, they know what they're talking about at least. And then it's like, oh. cool, you know, it's the channel. Um, you have access to the channel because you've proven you understand what basic Python is. Um, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, well, I thought the quiz was something completely different. My bad. Okay. Uh, it did end up being different because we kind of just stalled on how to you know actually execute code because we wanted them to code stuff and then pyro would test it um oh, okay. but due to both how we developed it and D- duncan's uh limitations with regard to running stuff on the vps um it just didn't really eventuate um because there is a tool from yeah. the python discord called snackbox which allows you to containerize and run python code which is what i wanted to use but we couldn't get access to that. I couldn't get it working. Um, so that's kind of why it just died off. And now it's all just questions, basically. Oh, okay. Um, and so there's, that's it? Like, there's not going to be any additions made to Pyro or uh, there's no plans for it? I want to rework the quiz command. Well, actually, I might keep the quiz command how it is. Um, but the idea is just to make some form of command that in the help channels, I can direct people and be like, you know, like, I spent half an hour explaining the difference between an integer and a string. Can you, you know, like run this command and tell me your result? Um, like sort a of DM like how, thing. how you were talking about uh, Mandrock being able to sort of block people from channels for a bit while they went off and learned. Yeah, so Mandrock v3 will come with the addition of so many more moderation tools uh, than previously. One of them being a timeout command for the support Discord, uh, the support channels, uh, mainly because um, people sometimes refuse to go and learn certain basic things, like as you said, learning the difference between a string and an integer. Um, so being timed out for a certain amount of time um, would allow them to go and learn that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, because that was sort of what we wanted to go for. But then um, I believe when I brought up the idea of Pyro with you, you were like... Um, you know, like, once Mandrop comes out, it's just going to get replaced anyway, so, like, don't worry about it. So that's kind of why we just scaled back everything. Yeah, I mean, that's why I ended up giving you the starboard um, idea. Well, the starboard, like, as in. Uh, if because... only we'd known that would come out for another in another year, we would have just done it anyway ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mainly gave that to you because I saw the potential that Pyro could be something 
uh, outside of Magnadox, whereas Mandrock is much of a, a guild only kind of thing, and I don't think it will ever be scaled past that. Um, but yeah, I think I think once Mandrock comes out, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, in uh, a couple of days, I will be going over the uh, like chances for economy commands. I'll be going over the uh, responses um, for the commands and like how the languages, like the grammar and stuff, um, and also trying to work out how to um, build the economy so it isn't OP as. Um, and then we'll pretty much go from there and it should be released hopefully by the end of next week. Um, but I've said that before and it hasn't happened. So yeah, I mean. Yeah. So I've currently got a to-do list for Pyro over my sort of uni break, and if Mandrock isn't done by the end of the holidays and I've got some spare time, I might just say I'm not waiting for Mandrock any longer. I'm going to do some of this stuff myself. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fair. Um, but with Mandrock um, V3, we will have reaction roles, which will mean that people won't see all the support channels when they join. They will be able to obtain the access to see it. Um and also we will have that timeout and that means that content creators will get more moderation ability so that they're able to um kind of moderate their channels a little better because at the moment if you tell someone to go learn something you have a whole argument with them and you have to call staff um yeah i end up having like i just snapchat vex like can you come 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 help out please well you you obviously got to have some way to get vex to do something um but yeah yeah, it would be nice because it's sort of just like um, you know, like others poke their heads into the channels and help out where they can. But it's like I feel like I'm since the MA's left the pretty much only person from the team that sort of chills in the Python channel. So that would be nice. Uh, I mean, the, our Discord staff uh, do the best they can. Toxic, unneeded behavior. But uh, in regards to helping, we're we're hoping to obviously get more efficient reviewers and as these podcasts go on hopefully we can kind of get to that point where people understand that we, we need people please um also how about i know it might not be there at the moment and um, cuff teasers whatever um but some more advanced topics down the line to draw more knowledgeable people in because currently we're sort of aiming at that um lower level mark for skill whereas if you had a couple more advanced projects people you know, a bit more higher up might well, come in. See, instead of that, because I know that is a great idea, instead of that, I'm thinking more of, like, diary-based stuff. So you show that you're doing a project, you show the steps that you're going through, um, and it's not necessarily a tutorial, but you're showing that you're getting to this endpoint and this is the code that you're doing it with. Um, and hopefully people will get interested by the idea, kind of follow along, get entertained by it, and hopefully join. Um, whereas, like, the tutorials are very... This is how you do it. This is why it happens. And we're going to continue to keep doing that. Uh, whereas having that separate idea, having that diary uh, based kind of stuff, um, like uh, Ben Awood, uh, he's doing the Dojao stuff and he's not necessarily showing how the code works. He's just showing segments of the code. He's showing how you get into the endpoint. Um, and he's like getting that community to help him get to that endpoint. Um, as I said in the last podcast, there was a lot of people talking about um, how they want more community-driven projects and events. I think something like that could be taken into So with, with the, the Discord.py or the Discord anti spam package you were talking about, the idea behind that was to have you streaming it as you were um, and hopefully bringing people in to get interested by because we're trying to even out the people that in entertain part with the people are getting knowledge part yeah but yeah well, that's no. that's my ted talk thank you for coming yeah because it's also like going through that as well this is my kind of personal thing about making uh, a python package or just a package in general is that you make so many assumptions about what people do or don't know and that you expect them to know but you don't explicitly say and then it just confronts you it's like oh that makes perfect sense to me how come it doesn't make sense to you and then it's like you have to step back and reevaluate some of the design choices you've made and stuff yeah exactly because i know for 
B12. Questions way out of the ballpark. Like, you guys got to remember that we're we're teaching people how to use the package, not creating a full scale bot. Yeah, because that's what I go for as well. Is just I want to showcase how to use the API. I don't want to build you a bot. I just want to show you how to use, you know, how to how to create channels, and put them under a category. It's exactly. up to you what you do with it. The the only the only difference between um like that and what I try to structure it to the best I can um purely because of how back and forth I was with the V eleven tutorials like I'd be doing oh, I, economy I wish one I'd day them more. yeah yeah exactly like um I, I suppose I had the prior knowledge and experience of like what happens like your first tutorial obviously yeah I, I managed to I managed to keep up up until my exams last week for the year and a half I've been doing tutorials or whatever they'd come out every yeah. two weeks yeah yeah but it's kind of just got to that point where it's like yeah oh, you know I don't have time oh, it, it, it does it does get like that sometimes like I, I know for instance I haven't done discord.js for a very long time that's just because I got into the routine of concentrating on other stuff that wasn't TV show that became oh, my, a, a, mine's more exams in university but you know same uh bit. i mean and and work like i work uh 40 hours so once yeah. i'm done once i'm done no. with that i'm like screw this i'm gonna go and vibe and chill out go watch a movie I'm gonna go i get that TV from show. uni so i've got assignments for all of my classes over this uh <clears throat> holiday yep and it's just like I just spent like six hours sitting here doing sequel and stuff and it's just like I don't wanna I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna have dinner, sit down and watch a movie. And then it's like and then Duncan's like, you know, you got another month to dockerize Pyro, otherwise it's going offline and it's just like yeah, I, I know. I, I know. How quickly did that come about though? Like he's been saying it since the start of the year, but it honestly like it four months went Oh, so I never planned on doing it straight away. I was always going to put it off till the holidays because that's when I have time. Yeah. I've started playing around with Docker here and there and it's just like, yeah, you know, it's kind of hard. Like I tried deploying it to my VPS the other day to set up um a Docker container for something. And like it broke like my entire config for stuff. Oh, and it's that's, just like, that's nice. It's like learning a new programming language. Like all the steps, all the configs, are all new. When I when I was um thinking about learning how to uh, do Docker stuff, and I still I was looking at like how some of it was constructed, and I was like, "Fuck, this is like beyond my capacity." It's like if I get if I get nerdy and start complaining about how I failed to set it up. I have my VPS from uh, <clears throat> Oxide.host uh, currently set up at, um, as for my bots and for my websites and stuff, and it uses Nginx as a reverse proxy. I'm assuming, hopefully, you know what that is. That surprises me. Does Duncan really do all the VPS stuff? Yeah, that's his entire job. Cool. Uh, Nginx basically is um, like the worker at the shopping at, at, at the supermarket telling you where to find an item ah so the request comes into the vps engine x goes cool you're looking for this domain um go to this running socket for the website and that'll give you what you want so i tried to set up docker with a website and that completely broke it because the port was already in use and i couldn't figure out how to proxy a proxy um and yeah, so I don't know it's just a new experience, and trying to learn new things while also trying not to break production things is kind of hard. You know what though? Um, Duncan is probably one of the smartest people I know, and even he was getting frustrated with how annoying Docker can be, and yeah, that so... like that made my day. Oh, it's no. great! So it's like in my flat, we're all studying. That's a lie. Uh, three of us are studying computer science, one of us doing engineering. I'm sort of in the middle for the computer science knowledge. Yeah. So, um, and the guy smarter than me is like tenfold smarter than me. Oh. And like, I'll go to him for help and he'll just be like, 
Haha, <laughs> 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 peasant. I just be like, yo, can you help me out with this? He's like, eh, uh, I don't know how to do that. It's just like, yeah. Oh, that's where you were going. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've always been. I mean, like yeah, that I mean it, happens, it happens the other way around as well. But I don't know. It's like I used to, I used to outclass him in Python, but I'm pretty sure he's better at, at that than me now. So, yeah. Like, he, he's worked in the industry before. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't really beat that. Um, oh, gone. Anyways, um, I think we should wrap this up now. We've been gone head and head for bloody an hour. So, um, this this has been Ethan. He is the Discord dot uh content creator let me, for let me do the outro. Oh man, you didn't plan this, did you? The outro. You're just no. like, yeah, so you're just like, eh, this is yeah. All right, we just get the tutorial voice on, voice on it. <clears throat> All right, guys. Cheers for uh, cheers for listening in, tuning in, whatever device you're on. This has been myself uh, tuning in as a guest on this beloved podcast with our Lord and Savior from Menu Docs, Connor. Tune in next time for whatever the topic is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll leave it at that. Peace. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>